Okay, in the second part of talking about processes, let's do some monitoring tasks. The first one, which is very common, is PS for processes. When you run PS, it will show you the processes running in this shell. Okay, in this shell, one bash is running, the PS command is running because I was checking the PS itself, so PS is running. Not that fancy. Let's do one. Our friends like X eyes, Control Z, stopped, background to the background. Let's do now it's running in the background. Let's do one X calc in the background directly. And let's do one X clock where my X calc went. Why it's here? This is X calc doesn't move that nice. <laughs> anyway, X clock update interval is one, so I will have the second, third hand which shows seconds. And okay, Control Z will stop that. On the jobs, I have these. On the PS, I have these. These are running in this shell, bash itself, ps command I just ran, and three different programs. PID, process ID is this, is this, is this, 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 this. TTY, my terminal, is terminal 1, and this is the time CPU spend on this command, practically 0 second, because these are all very, very small and lightweight processes. As you've seen, if I close one of these, and then run the jobs or just push the enter, it says xcalc is done, closed normally. If I terminated or killed them, I would have terminated here, as you saw. And, but on PS, I only have these processes. For sure, my machine has more processes running that I have Linux. You can do ps-e, and ask it to show extended processes or all the processes on the machine, not only this shell. So I have lots of processes running. I can try with wc-l and say, okay, at the moment I have 169 processes running to have this Linux. Another thing which is very useful is F, which shows the full format. I will just grab the head, so we will have the top part. UID is the user ID running this process. PID is process ID. Parent process ID who started this process. C is time, TTY, terminal, start time. Time is important, how much CPU spend on this process can see only one second for init. This is init, so process ID is one, run directly by the kernel itself. I can do a tail to see the last ones. The tail itself knows time spent. This is the time which this process started. This is the time equivalent to my this time. It's on the clock. Jody ran it. This is the process ID, parent process ID. You can see that tail, PSEF, X clock, X eyes, they all have the same parent process ID because that's the process ID of this shell I'm giving commands in. But these has different numbers in them. And it's very common. If I want to, for example, kill this X clock, I can try to find this X clock's process ID. PSEF, show me the long format. Grep, show me only the line width x clock in it. it says oh you have two different x clocks in your commands one is grep x clock which is the one i just ran the other one is x clock update one with this process id so i can try to kill it let's try for sure when i'm jody i can only kill my own processes so kill 2492 It's not dead. 
Why it's not dead? Because it's stopped process in another shell, maybe. Maybe. We are not sure. But I asked it politely to terminate yourself, and it rejected. So what I should do? Cool. Okay, so this was PS. Some people love PSEF. That's what I use. Some. This was the PS only showing for this specific uh, shell. And you can see that it tells me that this is killed. This is not for PS. This is for pushing enter here. Like terminated. PSEF is what I use and like. Some people prefer PS. A UX combination, which is kind of similar, not that different. This also will show you some more information like CPU, memory, percentage of the CPU usage at this moment, memory usage at this moment. So it may be useful to see how much uh, memory they are using, for example, or CPU they are using. And as you saw, in many cases, we do PSEF, grep it with the process name. So we'll just have the process name we also have pgrep which does this for example i can say psef grep x show me whatever has x in its names for example i wanted to find this show me whatever has eyes in it instead of this i can say pgrep i let me show will show me the process id of the process which has i in it. If I had more, if I had many xi's and many and many and many and many, they are running over each other. That's why you see only one. And other. And you could say p grep process grep, grep on the processes, whatever has i in it. These are the ones, the processes which has i in their name. As you know, we can do like this. X args kill. What will happen? In this case, sorry, pgrep i will show this. So if I do pgrep i, pipe it to x args kill, we'll put all of these here and we'll run this part this is what x args do you know from the previous lesson so he, this with this method i can kill all of my x r x i's and it will tell me that these are all terminated so if i do a jobs i don't have anything anymore in this specific shell this is the pgrep and i can use dash dash sort to sort them based on different things up to now we were checking the processes or grepping them with different things. But I also have this top. The top command is very useful to get a glance. In a glance, you will see what the system is doing. Many system admins will run top command as soon as they feel something is wrong or they want to see the system's status. It has a list of the processes running on the system. Their CPU usage, it's sorted by CPU usage. Their memory usage, how much memory xorg is running at the moment. As you can see, it's updated all the time. PID, process ID, which user is running it, how nice is it. We will see later in other chapters. And percentage of the CPU, percentage of the memory, time, how much time CPU used to run this program and the command itself. Also, it shows you the current time and the system uptime. My system was up for three hours and 32 minutes. Some people start talking about their large uptimes. I have a server with four years, two months, blah, blah of uptime. It is cool. You have not restarted your server for this long. But nowadays, if you are updating a server, its kernel is changed. You have to restart it. So it's not super cool, but still it's fun five users we have on this system and this is our system's load average this is the load average in the last one minute last five minutes 
last 15 minutes. This was the load average. This is a very important concept and I can assure you that some even experienced system admins cannot explain it very nice or correctly or interpret it. The load average will tell you kind of how many processes are waiting in the queue to be run. So at the moment, very few processes are waiting to be run. So my system is okay. If I have one CPU and my load average is one, it means it's like a queue that one is answering, one is in a queue and everything is working just in time. So system is okay, but it's working in its fullest capacity. Little bit strange. If I have four CPU cores and my load average is two, it is good. 50% of system is being used and that's a high level, especially if you have it in 15 minutes. It means you are really, really using your computer. If it's four, you are on the edge of your being stable. As soon as this number goes higher than the number of cores you have, that's dangerous, especially if this or this goes higher. Because if this goes, it means, okay, in one minute, maybe we had some peak and sometimes some processes are waiting. But if, sorry, I had a network interruption. Hopefully it will work now. Uh, as I was telling you, this number shows how many processes are waiting in your queue. So for example, if you have four CPU cores and you have four here, it means the last minute, every single processor was 100% busy. That's why this number may go higher than 100 because you have more than one CPU and 100 here will, as a percentage of the CPU, will show you, okay, one CPU is busy. The problem is when this number or this number goes higher than the number of cores you have. It means some of the processes are waiting and not getting response in time. So even this may go higher and higher and higher. If this reaches higher than the number of processes you have, more and more things will be stacked. I have seen computers with, for example, 60 here, which may have 42 CPUs, and it will become doubled in a few seconds. And suddenly it's not even possible to issue new commands because all of them are processes. You cannot SSH, it's very, Problematic. Anyway, this is one of the best indicators of the status of your computer. This is the top. Control C will break it or Q will correctly break it. Uh, let me run the top once more. There are a couple of switches and keys. If you push question mark, you will get a shortcut on the different keys. One important one, I will I'll press the Q, now I'm out of the help. One important one is capital M. It will sort the data based on the memory. So if you have a memory issue, you can see who is using your memory. Also, you have the number of the tasks here, same as PSEF grep, uh, sorry, pipe with WC-L. Also, you have the memory status here. This is your memory. I have this much memory. This is six gigabytes and this much is free. Also on my swap, I have one gigabyte, gigabyte of swap, which is not used at all. This is good. If you are using your swap, that's very, very dangerous. You should not use your swap. It's a last resort for the CPU. And in normal case, if you understand what you are doing, that's good. This is top M. C, show full commands with C, with K, you can directly kill something. If I'm in the top and I push K, it says, okay, do you want me to kill whom? Is 695 okay? This is the first one. Always the first one is the suggestion. If you kill it, the graphical mode will go. If I can kill it, I cannot because this is run by root, so I don't have access to kill it. Anyway. I will do a control, I will do a Q, control C to break it. So this was top. We have two more, free and uptime. Since you know the top, free is easy. Free will show you the status of the memory. I have this much memory. 
this much is used i have this much swap this much is used reading this is a little bit difficult so we have different switches for this for example i can say free dash g talk in gigabytes it says okay you have five zero is used you have uh swap is zero because if i'm talking in gigabytes this is the best number i can show you so we do with dash h which is human readable this is a very good switch so it will convert all the numbers to the human readable equivalents will tell you that you have find 5.8 gigabytes 411 megabytes is used you have 900 megabytes of swap zero byte is used so dash h is always a good choice this is free and we have the uptime uptime will show you the current time how long system have been up three hours 44 minutes how many users are logged in five because i have different shells and the load average one minute five minutes 15 minutes as i talk to you this should be lower than the number of calls you have to for the system to work correctly there are a couple of switches there for uptime for example you can say i think uptime pretty if you want to show it somewhere on a script or something and let me talk about the watch and let, then we go to the next uh part watch is a nice command and i use it a lot some commands do have an output for example free many of the commands you can say watch free sorry and it will show you the output of the free every two seconds so it's kind of a easier monitoring top does this automatically but it says okay on this machine on this time this was the output of the free command i use it a lot in different cases because for example you are copying lots of files and you want to see if you have enough disk space free is for memory df is for disk space df human readable dash h i have a problem in my network but anyway df-h is human readable it says okay on my sda1 i have 3.8 gigabyte of free memory so i can say df-h grab it with sda1 hmm. bad things are happening df-h grab it with sda1 so only will show this one i can say watch the output of this command this is cool and i can increase the font size and just keep it like this and go to whatever i'm doing time to time from far far distance i will have a look here and say okay i still have enough uh disk space left watch is very useful for me i use it a lot it has a couple of switches dash n will specify the interval dash b will beep if command has a non-zero exit if a failure happens and dash d will just show the differences not all the output so if you're checking the differences dash b may also be useful for you dash d might be also be useful for you that was whatever i wanted to tell you about the monitoring two more commands in the next section and we are done